Hi, Nick from Patrick's here, and today I'm talking about the 1222 Performance VCO by Sam Battle, aka Look Mum, No Computer. This is now a Eurorack uh, format oscillator. You may have seen this if you follow his channel. He has his own sort of Cosmo system, which is a 5U system using the Eurorack power supply spec. And, uh, but it's, you know, 5U, so it's quite a bit bigger and uses quarter inch jacks. You know, he's a very great uh, YouTuber. If you haven't checked out his stuff, he does a lot of cool DIY projects. Very self-taught, very, uh, very inquisitive in how he puts stuff together. But um, if you follow him, you could see that, like, he started creating his own line of modules. And now it's being ported back into Eurorack. And that's what we're looking at here today. And so, you know, there's a lot of VCOs in Eurorack. So what makes this one stand out? And I think the most immediate... Thing you could tell is that in the top right corner over here you can see that it actually has an integrated tuner that's always running. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that before performance, especially if you are using analog oscillators like this, that I had to use a tuner, um, which the Mordax Data actually has a tuner in it. Very great feature. Um, but it, it, it's kind of, it's somewhat nerve-wracking to be in the middle of performance and accidentally bump into a knob and realize I'm a few uh, cents sharp or flat. So this actually just has a readout right there. So that alone I think is amazing. Um, other sort of features is this, this big knob here is actually uh, gonna be notched in five places and it's an octave switch. So again, sort of oscillators will have a big knob which is your coarse tuning. And if you accidentally bump into that, all bets are off, you gotta retune. So we have this that locks into our octaves and it's really easy to go between the octaves. And then this is gonna be our fine tune knob, which just goes six semitones down, six semitones up, so it has that octave range. So when you look at the module itself, it's really, really great and really, really straightforward. The only other knob we hadn't talked about is your pulse width modulation there. Let's go ahead and hear that done manually. So you could hear there all the way to the left, it will actually choke your, uh, your signal all the way out, but not all the way to the right. Sometimes if you do push something to the right, 100% duty cycle will actually just be full DC offset and not create any noise. So super duper easy. I actually kind of like doing that. I have some other uh, oscillators that have the manual pulse width modulation and instead of just running an LFO through it, I sometimes will just manually wiggle it by hand. Super duper fun. Um, other things that are super notable about this particular module, uh, we don't see it here in the front panel, but in the back of the panel, there are going to be ex there are expander pins, and um, you know some planned sort of expansions are like an oscillator driver. So if you have more than one of these in a system, you could probably feed this driver a few volt per octave uh, signals, and then do things like chords or or you know just have one source to feed all your pitch data. Uh, another thing that they had talked about is uh, a mixer, so you could have couple of these into your system and then again mix it down into a module without patching which you know when you look at subtractive synthesizers oftentimes they will stack more than one voice on top of each other so that's uh, actually a pretty sweet expansion and then the other one would be to do cross modulation which I'll go into some of that here but we in the front we have sync uh, FM you know pulse myth modulation you could get some really funky tones out of so to have two of these kind of cross modulate each other using some sort of expander or uh, could be a very fun way to create quick patches without actually having to use patch cables. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to go over a few features. You know, I, I think the build quality is really great. Again, I really love a, uh, <laughs> a, a module with an octave switch in it. The Dixie 2 Plus does that very, very well. And again, if you're running a sequence over and over again, and you just wanna have something quick. So I'm gonna record a sequence here on my uh, key step. And I hit play. Very easy. Um, the key step does have a transpose function on it, but oftentimes our sequencers won't have that, or you just want to reach in there. Uh, you should note too that that switch as it's playing, sometimes it's, it can be kind of hard to hit it exactly on the note. Hey, that's okay. Uh, it's part of the fun of uh, performing. The FM input here. So it's it's really cool. Before we go into that, I'll just show you that when I play a note, it will just hold on to that note. Obviously it's an oscillator, it's droning, but it's being gated behind our uh, DVCA here, which is being triggered by the Rainier. Um, but I could see easily that I'll play some octaves here. So low C, uh, up an octave. So I already know that this is tracking very well over four octaves. 
Um, I really can't tell you how many oscillators I've played around with that I, I'll keep it in three octave range because, you know, even though it says it can track over time, it may fall out of tune. Um, which again, another great feature here is our tracking is actually in the front of the panel. So you could use a little screwdriver and uh, manually calibrate your oscillator without having to pull it out of the rack. But like I said, very easy to see that this is actually in tune. So there's our E flat F. It's one of those things that, you know, like I said, like I know that not every oscillator can have that on there, but it's just so easy to test those sort of things because as much as I trust my ear, I do rely on visual feedback to make sure everything's rock solid because the worst thing is going back and listening to a uh, performance and realizing, uh-oh, everything was kind of out of tune. So. so yeah, let's play around with some other things here. So that pulse width modulation, let's just hear that. On the other side of the Rainier, I have uh, a slow LFO, so new mistake. And you're gonna hear that it will push it into that stage where our duty cycle is either completely open or completely closed. And I like it. We all love pulse width modulation. It kind of gives that sort of uh, phasey, slightly detuned sound, but just with one oscillator. And you could, like I was saying, if you just run this into audio rate, it actually ends up adding harmonics from the modulation source. Cool. Um, we have the sync input there. Sync sounds are, I found it kind of tough to do in Eurorack. I'm not gonna really demo that right now because um, usually I want another oscillator that's like very well in tune. Uh, I've had tried around with the data, but it's kind of harder because I really like playing that other, the thing that it's being synced to is the oscillator that you want to play. So as I play around with this oscillator, we don't get as much play, but we can play around with the FM. First, we'll start out, we'll use our low, uh, uh low rate cycle from our LFO into the FM, which will just give us like a pretty wide bravado, uh, bravado, uh, but then we start going fast and that's where we actually get our FM timbres. So with FM timbres, um, especially when we're playing with two things that aren't in tune, are gonna be very anharmonic, very noisy. And this thing does really get super noisy, uh, super fun to play around with. Nice and clangorous. Actually, let's try a, uh, our uh, triangle wave for the FM. Cool. So, that's really fun, but let's try something that's actually in tune. So uh, I have my data over here and it's also, you can see down here that it's actually also tracking the, the pitch that's coming in. So if I set this to C, so it's actually, let's see, we'll play C, we got a C, FM in, and we'll take our wave two out. The funny thing there is, again, this tracks really well. Up there, we're, we're getting a little bit of frequency beating. But because these are so close in um, pitch, you know, they're, there's not a lot, they're very in tune. Um, you don't hear the FM quite as, uh, as much as if, you, if I start moving it more towards those inharmonic zones. So that's actually sounds really great. And I'll, I'm gonna go out of the, uh, the soft tooth so it's a little bit louder. Actually, out of the triangle, we could really... It's a little bit quieter, because it is, you know, the triangle is going to be a quieter wave. But you could kind of hear that sort of bellish FM sound that I really like. And actually, let's see if I can... If I go into my envelope. But again, as we kind of move away from being in tune until we are truly in tune. So let's get, get that C. 
So now when we are in C, it's easy to set those ratios. If we want to have them, this is in tune. That's one, uh, one octave below the uh, data. Again, very, very subtle. I like that just turning that, uh, that fine pitched knob against something else that's tuned is a really easy way to find some really fun uh, FM ratios. Cool. Yeah, so that's just a brief overview. Again, like the VCO is actually very straightforward. I just wanted to show you some of the cool things that I liked about it. And as always, happy patching and let us know if you have any questions.